Hello and thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the graph coloring backtracking algorithm. So let's just give a problem description. So given a graph of vertices and edges, you want to color the nodes in such a way that no two adjacent vertices share a color using the fewest number of colors. So if we look at this pentagon star graph below, this is a famous uh, iterate, this is a famous representation of this problem found online. You can see that none of the two adjacent nodes share a color. So if you look at the top node, for example, you can see that it only shares an edge with blue and there are no reds attached to it. And if you look around at all the other nodes throughout this graph, you'll see that the same property holds true. So the problem description is that if we are given a graph G and an integer M, we want to find if we can satisfy the problem description using at most M colors. So this pentagon star problem has 10 nodes, so its n value is 10, and m is equal to 3. Now let's look at a smaller problem with n equal to 3 and m equal to 3, just so we could see how big the search space can get. So if we had no restrictions on building this tree, meaning that we can build branches that have uh, the same colored node with each other, then this is how, this is, uh, how the tree would be built. So the very first node could either be red, green, or blue. So then their children could either be red, green, or blue as well. And finally, the last node can either be red, green, or blue. So if we were to try to cherry pick an optimal solution out of this tree, let's say we picked the first node to be red, then we picked the second node to be blue, and lastly we picked the last node to be green, that would be a solution that fits the problem description. However, this tree is full of so much bloat, it has a lot of branches that are not optimal, and therefore we want to avoid that by using back, uh, backtracking. So this tree itself has n to the m possible ways to color the three nodes. So that's 3 cubed, which is equal to 27. So now let's walk through an example problem and examine some code. So we have this four node graph here, and they are connected to each other as follows. So n is equal to 4, m is equal to 3. So the very first step that we do is we build an adjacency matrix. So an adjacency matrix simply returns a 1 if two nodes are connected, or a 0 if they're not. So if you look at nodes 0 and 1, you will see that in the graph wherever 0 and 1 line up, there is a 1. But if you look at node 0 and 2, wherever 0 and 2 line up in the graph, you will see that there is a 0 which means they are not connected. So now let's take a look at the code for the graph coloring problem. So it takes an value k, where k is the node that we're currently trying to color. Inside of this function, there's a for loop. So c is equal to 1 all the way to c less than or equal to m. So it tries the first color, which is red. And then it'll try to call the isSafe function, which takes in the k value and the current color that we're trying to place and it'll check to see if it's safe to, to color that node with the color that we're, we're trying. If it is, it'll color the node, and then if we haven't gone through all the nodes yet, we recursively call graph color with itself, but for the next iteration of k. If we've gone through all the nodes, then we just print the solution and return to break the recursion. So k in this case is the node that we're going to color in this level of the recursion, and xk is an array that holds the current color at each node. So just to clarify what xk is, if we have an array 0, 1, 2 in, uh, with indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and if we had a solution like the one shown here, then x of 0 is equal to 1, which is red, x of 1 is equal to 2, which is green, x of 2 is equal to 1, which is red, and x of 3 is equal to 3, and that represents the coloring of the graph that you can see in the top left hand corner. So now let's take a look at the graph coloring function again and notice that the isSafe function denoted here by this arrow is called. So let's examine how isSafe works, uh, which checks to see if we can, if the current color C is safe to place. So here's the isSafe function. So what it does, it takes in the node K and a color C. And then it performs a loop from, so int i is equal to zero, i is less than n, and then it iterates i plus plus. So what this loop is doing is it's iterating through all the nodes in the graph. Then, uh, so in the, in the loop, it'll check to see if g k i is equal to one. So it's checking to see if the node that we passed it in k 
is adjacent to the node i that it's checking in the loop. If it is adjacent and their colors match, which is denoted by c equal to x of i, then it returns false, which means that we can't place that color because one of the neighboring nodes already has that color. Now, if it loops through all of n and finds out that none of those nodes have that color, then it returns true, which means that it's safe to place the node. So let's take a look at, uh, let's walk through a few iterations of this recursion so we can see what's going on here. So first we call graph color zero. So we're trying to color in the node zero in the graph to the left. So k in this case is equal to zero and it starts the loop setting the first c equal to one in that for loop. Now it wants to check if coloring node zero with red one is safe. So it passes in k zero c one into is safe. So is safe will start a new loop. So in the first iteration, i is equal to zero. And then it'll check to see if g k i is equal to one. So g zero zero is equal to one because a, a, a node is adjacent to itself. And then it'll check to see if c is equal to x at i. And it is not because c is equal to one. And so far since x, uh, since the x array is filled with all zeros, then they are not equal. So one is not equal to zero. So then it tries the next iteration of the loop, i is equal to one. And it checks to see if g k i is equal to one, which it is, they are adjacent. However, the colors are not equal because of course x is still filled with zeros and one is not equal to any of those zeros. So this loop continues for all n. So it'll check to see all the different nodes that it can. And eventually in this iteration, it'll return true. So because it is safe, so now we're back at the graph coloring function, it'll set x k equal to c. So x zero is now equal to one, which means we've colored in the node at zero as red. We then check to see if k plus one is less than n, and in this case, zero plus one is equal to one, and that's less than four. We can now recursively call graph color for k plus one. So we recursively call graph color, now the value is one. So k is equal to one, and c in the first iteration of this for loop is equal to one. So we're gonna attempt to, to see if we can color in node one as red. So we call is safe, and in the very first iteration of is safe, i is equal to zero. So now it's going to compare the colors between node zero and node one if they are adjacent. So i is equal to zero, and now it tries g k of i. So g k, which is g one, and i, which is zero, gives us g one zero. So in the adjacency matrix, we can see that that is equal to one. And then we check to see if c, the value we are trying to set, which is one, is equal to x of i, so node zero, x of zero. And they are equal, so it returns false. Because now we know we cannot color node one as red, because an adjacent node to it, node zero, is already red. So going back to the graph color function on the left hand side, we now iterate the loop once more, so c is equal to two. So we're gonna attempt to place two in the position node one. And we check to see if that's safe. And needless to say, it returns true. It is safe to place the green because it is not adjacent to any other green nodes. In fact, we don't even have green on the board yet. So it, it'll set xk is equal to c. So since k is one, it'll set x1 is equal to two, which is our value for c, which will color in that first node as green. It'll once again check to see if k plus one is less than n. So in this case, two is less than n. So it will recursively call graph color k plus one and try to set node two in the next iteration. And it'll repeat this process in a recursive way until all the nodes are filled. So the recursion continues for all the nodes in the graph trying all the different colors. If no color is safe and not all the nodes are filled, it'll backtrack and try a different color on the last node that we've set. So let's see what this means in a visual way using a, a tree. So here we have a tree and for node zero, we can either pick red, green, or blue. So let's go ahead and pick red. So we now set node zero to red. Now we're looking at node one. 
and that could either be green or blue. So let's go ahead and set it to green. So now we want to look at node 2, and that could either be blue or red. So let's go ahead and set it to blue. So now that we've set node, node 2 to blue, we want to take a look at node 3. And this can't be red, green, or blue, because all three of those colors are adjacent to a node that is one of those colors. So we've reached the end of the line for that branch. So we put an X there, and now we recurse back up to the last node that we set and go down the other branch of that tree. So we now set node 2 equal to red. So now that we're at node 2, we have one option to set node 3, and that's blue. So we go ahead and go down the tree and set 3 equal to blue. So now we look back at the graph, and all four nodes are filled and no two adjacent vertices share a color. So we've just returned an optimal solution of red, green, red, blue. Or in number form, it's one, two, one, three. For small problems like this, this backtracking approach is okay. However, the graph coloring problem is a well-known NP-hard problem. So this algorithm is still big O M to the N, where M is the number of colors and N is the number of vertices. So it's by no means efficient for very large problems, but it's just a good demonstration of how the backtracking algorithm works in a new way. And that concludes our video on graph coloring backtracking. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Go to csbreakdown.com for more, subscribe to our videos, and like this. Bye.